see how far I get. Oh, can I get sound? All right, I've got to turn that down a bit. To provide a little background on other chess servers, I used to be rated about 2,000 at this variant. So I will probably crush my opponents for the first few rounds and then uh, have things peter out and um, uh, get more challenging and such. Like here, if he plays g6, I just drop. Oh, I forgot. He just takes here. All right, this is the warm-up round, guys. None of you saw me hang the pawn. Also, it might not even be that bad, but um, we'll see. He's got to drop a pawn here. I probably drop a pawn there. Yep, yep. There we go. Check, 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 mate. All right, so uh, the 204th place. Uh, it's not bad. I'll definitely take it. Okay, so oh, why didn't I go berserk? Well, I guess because going berserk is kind of crazy, and I'm still warming up. That's why not. Um, so yeah, if I just get my knight all the way up here, things will be going um, better than they are. So I'm looking at dropping a pawn there. Uh, it's kind of hard for black to discourage that. At the same time, I don't want to see my opponent move forward, but... Um... Alright, so... I mean, yeah, I'm just going to invade on the light squares if I can. I don't know if this is actual theory or if I'm just making this up, but um, in either event, it is pretty fun to play this way. So f7 is soft. Um, you know, if I had a queen, that would be so awesome. That's kind of a far way away. Put a bishop here and um, be careful not to myself get checkmated. And yeah, we'll just keep trading and trading. Maybe I can get the right piece, whatever that piece is. At present, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be getting uh, to try to win this, but. I'm sure there is some piece that helps. And I'm castle, hopefully out of danger, hopefully to better pastures and such. Um, to greener pastures is the word I was looking for. Um, hmm. Do I do knight d5 or do I do pawn at g5? Not really afraid of this bishop. So here we go. Once the knight moves, I just drop a knight here. Let's check. Um, 
Okay, so now I got two knights. He's getting a bishop. Uh, this ensures that my light scores are still defended. Oh, okay, so I can take f6 now. So now I've got three knights in hand. And uh, he can't move the king there because I've got various ways of checkmating, like this one. That one works. Cool. remember if I'm supposed to play e5 or e6 on move one. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, one thing that is important is just sack sack mate. And so the more pieces uh, you capture the better off your the better your odds are. Um, I think I'm not afraid of this sack. Okay, so two can play that game. Uh, that's scary. That's quite scary. I mean, I can control it, but is that what I want to do? I think this is what I want to do, just keeping my pawns together. Okay. Um... Get my king out of here. <laughs> hmm. My opponent has no pieces to drop. This would be frightening if that weren't the case. If suddenly he had a piece to drop, I'm not sure what I would do. I think queen here is okay, because I'm leaving open the option of going back. And just, like, attacking this way. Alright, so now it's my turn. With a move like h3, uh, my opponent signals that he's done attacking, and giving me a turn to attack. And now c is hanging. Um... Yes, he can drop his bishop on e7, but I don't think that that helps him very much. Alright, um, so now I'm threatening to drop here and drop various mates and such. Um, I could also put a rook at g6. Oh, but, wait. Wait, is this mate? That one's a queen and it's mate, so that's pretty convincing. Alright. <laughs> How do you like them apples? Uh, get the... Uh, the go berserk sound, and I don't go berserk. It's kind of the best of both worlds there. So I forget how this variation goes. This is definitely going to be a learning experience. Um, like, can I take here? Can I take there? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure that none of what I'm doing is sound, but um, it's still fun. Let me throw in d4. Just protect my knight out here. 
uh, the intent of dropping e4 and trying to win f7. Uh, so hopefully this is just a pawn sacrifice and doesn't lose me my king. Um, if that's not the case, well, I don't think my opponent's going to punish me for it. But um, All right, let's sack, sack, mate. got to put a knight here, I think. Although I don't know if that helps him. Yeah, so... This is check. He just puts a piece on e6, and I take on c6. Oh, I expected a pawn, or at least a drop on e6. Maybe dropping the knight there. Um, all right, what's his big idea? Um, there's lots of ways I can continue this. Here we go. This wins a knight. Or a queen. can't decide. They both look so good. All right, and perfect. Not off to a bad start. Not bad at all. So I'm almost in the top 100. Unlike this here fellow who's been playing forever, and is not quite in the top 100 yet. Um, feel bad for the fellow, but at some point you kind of have to call it and say, you know, maybe I ought to watch a few games and not play as many games and just see what happens. Um, Go figure, the one time I go Berserk, it's against an opponent who kind of sort of knows what he's doing. Um, so I need to break down this e4 pawn as soon as possible. Um, Alright, or just work around it. That works too. Alright, can I break down a barrier on d6? Oh, he's not trying to stop my attack. That's convenient. Yeah, if he's just gonna let the attack to proceed, then... Okay then, yeah, there's really not much for me to try. Um, just for the lulls, we're going to drop all the pawns. Just because this looks cool. Alright. That was fun. Alright, so now I'm dealing with guys rated over 1500, so I'm going to take this more seriously and not go berserk instantly. Um, I'm not afraid of him taking. If that's his big idea of sacking and then... Yeah, a lot of people come up with this idea. It doesn't quite offer advantage. Alright, so this... Hopefully I can just castle by hand and sack there and... Uh, everything will be cool. Yeah. Like, if he got a bishop somehow, then this would be more challenging, but he has no such bishop, and so I'm just going to continue developing at my leisure, 
castle by hand and declare victory. Um, this position is superior for me. Generally, you do prefer to have knights to bishops because knights are better at breaking through. Um, but in this case, I'm so well covered on all the dark squares that his knight doesn't scare me. Um, yeah, and I see he keeps trading knight for bishop, bishop for knight, knight for bishop, bishop for knight. He's Each time he does this, it costs him a tempo. And that's one more tempo for me to develop each time he trades. Um, and so he's a little bit puzzled why um, his attack just keeps fizzling out. And it's because he keeps trading all his pieces and helping me develop. And um, let's see, do I drop it G4? I think I do. So now I'm intending knight d4 and takes. Alright, if he drops and attacks my queen, I just take it. Or I could take f3. Um, Alright, that's a little bit trickier. I think blocking this, uh, ooh, I don't want to take with my queen. Taking with my queen was my original idea. Um, doesn't quite work so well. All right, so I'm attacking his queen. If we can liquidate, that actually accelerates my attack because then I have a queen in hand and it's difficult for him to stop me from attacking. This is a pretty typical bug house pattern where if the pawn goes, um, all right, so am I safe if I do king g8 or king h8? I'm pretty sure I'm safe because none of his checks, like he doesn't yet have a queen in hand. Even if he did, I just do bishop takes. So I'm pretty set here. I just want the checks to end so I can attack now. Sorry. Yeah, this is a pretty typical bug house pattern where if the pawn's taken... Um, oh, I don't have a pawn in hand. That's problematic. Um, Alright, so I have to take here to get the pawn in hand. In this case, it's not a pawn, it's a bishop. Um, should have thought that through a little bit better. But I think I'm still good. Pawn in hand would have been pretty convincing. Uh, here he has to just drop on g2 and hope I don't have some other kind of way to attack. And I'm thinking maybe just knight takes f2 next. Uh, if if he'd gone to g2, then I had knight drop at f4, and then queen g2 mate. Um, this way's not so clear. Okay. Uh, he has queen in hand, which is pretty scary. Okay, you can drop any of these pieces to block the check. Some might be better blockers than others. So I'm considering bishop drop at g2. Um, once he gives me a tempo to attack.
important thing here is that he has no good checks. I mean, that's it. That is a check, but he's giving up material each time he does these checks. And he's running out of steam. Like, if he had an unlimited number of pieces, like you tend to have in Bug House, this would be a lot more to fear. Um, but as it stands in Crazy House, he's just giving away his whole army uh, for some nebulous hope of an attack. You can't just give away everything in this. It actually takes some coordination for these attacks to work. Hey, welcome. Alright, so here I am, sitting on 21 tournament points. Um, yeah, it's a great game, for sure. People must be tired after having played in this tournament so much. Am I going to see E4? No, it's not E4. If he played E4, maybe I would have um, taken a chance. But since he's playing something more a little slower, uh, more positionally solid, if there is such a thing, um, I'm not going to go Berserk against that. Ah, Crazy House is, it's, um, if you take a piece, you can place it on the board. So, like, each piece you capture becomes your own. Um, so, attacks are quite fun, and sacrifices are pretty exciting in this variant. Um... Alright, so, I've created some kind of target on f3 um, let's castle get the king to some relative safety and then prepare to drop everything on f3 free rook not a free rook but this is fun so yeah, that's what I meant by, I took his bishop, and now I have a bishop in hand, so I can place it and just take stuff with it. Um. Hmm. Okay, I'm taking here. Do I drop it F3 or elsewhere? Oh boy. If I had just one more piece, this would help my attack greatly. Oh, here's how we do it. We take there first, and then we check, and now using the knight that I gathered, um, assuming you goes back and, yeah, there's mate. That's pretty effective. Yeah, you're more than welcome to play. Just go join up this tournament that's been happening on leechess.org. Um, it's a good fun event. Okay, I'm protecting against him pushing that. Um, he pushes that anyway. And now we pin this. If he takes there, I take the back. And now I have a pinned piece. It's castled so I don't get mated. Um, this looks like it's going to be a good game. Okay. That's as fun to do in this variant as it is in Bug House. Just that drop on h6. Oh, if I only had... If I only had more pieces to drop and just to win this outright... That'd be so nice. 
Uh, I don't want to give up my bishop for knight just yet, because as, if he had a bishop, he'd just put it here. So I'm holding off on taking c6 until the moment's right. Um, or until I'm kind of forced into it. We're gonna say the moment's right, even if it might not be. Yeah, go ahead. You're most welcome to join. Uh, be forewarned that this variant's a little bit tricky, so don't get too flustered if uh, you lose a game or two or ten, because um, these things happen. Oh, hang on, I got another idea. Oh, also, now I have a bishop in hand. That's actually kind of useful. Um, I forgot that doing that exchange would give me a bishop. So now he's got a pick. I don't know that I would have picked that way. It looks dangerous. That looks very dangerous. Oh, hey, I've got a pawn in hand. This just keeps getting better. Um, if only I had one more piece in hand, that would actually help quite a bit. Is this mate? No, it's not mate. Where's the mate? Indeed, where is the mate? Alright, we'll just keep taking stuff. I'm still not seeing a checkmate. And meanwhile, I've given my opponent a lot of pieces, so if I'm not careful, I get mated. Um... Oh, this is check. Now we're talking. All right, I have to analyze that one later. Because there's a good chance that maybe I walked into something during this whole attacking sequence. Like, did I always have this 95? Yeah, 95 would have been mate. See, that's how I should have played it. I didn't, I saw knight g5, which is more typical. Uh, I missed knight e5 though. So I got, wait, how many wins is that? Eight wins in a row. Not bad. Right, yeah. Before I exchanged rook for queen, knight e5 would have been mate. I only saw knight g5, which isn't mate, but knight e5 works. Um, okay. Let's just keep developing the pieces. Set up a cheeky threat here. Um, okay, I'm not sure about e6. Maybe taking d3 was better. Okay, I'm gonna castle so I don't get mated. You might notice a pattern that I worry a lot about the safety of my own king in this variant. Uh, many crazy house players are far more aggressive than myself. Okay. Wonder what's going on there. So, bishop at d5 forks the knights. 
And I guess you could do bishop e2 to protect both knights. Um, you remember that thing I was saying earlier about how each time you trade, it gives up a tempo. And so you want to have some purpose whenever you trade. Here I got kind of a dual purpose. One point is I want to get a knight in hand. And secondly, I was hoping to get, induce some kind of weakness over there. Um, this looks tricky. All his light squares are covered, and that's a problem for me. Okay, so now I can put a knight on d3. And of course he goes back here. So we trade these knights. I could trade queens if I want to. Oh, never mind, I can't. It's not an option. I was not expecting uh, that recapture. All right, so this looks reasonable. I'm really, really worried about the safety of my own king with him having so many attacking pieces. But I'm still not seeing an entry square for his attack. Um, hmm. Alright, I'm sacking a knight for two pawns. Maybe this is dubious, but it looks fun. It looks incredibly fun because I have this potential sack over here now. And the one thing I have to watch out for is a double pawn drop. Now he can drop a piece on e7 and fork me. Um, I have a plan for that. I have an idea. Maybe it's not a good plan. Yeah, I shouldn't have invited that in hindsight. <laughs> okay. Well. Well, well, well. Uh, this didn't quite work out the way he planned it. I don't know how he planned it, but there's no way he could have planned that this is his idea. So he's going to block. Or he's just going to get mated. I mean, that's an option. There might even be a more convincing way for me to do this, but this works. Yeah, no. You don't want to try running your king across. It just doesn't work out. Oh. Uh. One thing here is, uh, the thing I'm viewing the chat on isn't the same thing I'm streaming on. So, I'd love to check out your game, I just don't know how to do it. Even with the link there. I can't really check it out and put it on stream, is the issue. But I'm sure it's a fantastic game. Um. Okay, so I'm afraid of pawn at d5, so that's why I played bishop e2 instead of bishop c4. Alright, take the e5 square. Um, put a pawn in e5. And so next, my, my next target is d6. Um... If I had a piece in hand, I would drop it on d6 right now. And pretty much win the game instantly. I have no such piece. But if I had one, oh, it would be glorious. Ah, very nice. Yeah, sacks in this game are a lot of fun. Um, they tend to be pretty effective. Alright, so I'm aiming to drop at d6 and then follow up with knight takes.
Ooh, do I do Pontix though? Pontix could also be good. No, this is check. This forces the king to move. This makes the king more vulnerable. Hmm, breaking through this is going to be tricky. Okay, I'm just going to assume this works, even though I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Yeah. Um... I just need more pieces to drop there. I mean, this is a pretty uncomfortable position for black, because he doesn't have any attackers either. Um, so... I mean, yeah, these are the soft spots that I'm targeting. They're, inevitably, somehow, this is going to work out. I just don't know how. Like, right now I'm looking at bishop takes, knight takes, bishop takes, king takes, and then I drop a pawn at d6 and win the queen. Um, and it's a little tricky to see how he stops this without giving me something that I can drop. Like, if he blocks here on f6, or I guess even if he... Well, okay, let's just go with what I saw. Check, check, check. I was going to say even if I just uh, take somewhere else, I still get a piece that I'm capable of dropping at d6. But no, this just wins a queen. At the cost of giving up a lot of pieces that he can attack with. Um, oh, he resigns? Really? Okay, I'll take it. Maybe he's just afraid of my rating or he's tired or something. Um, yeah, losing your queen in this variant isn't so bad, um, especially if you get a piece or two for it. It's when you're down pieces that things really hurt. Um, I'm just bringing out all my pieces. If he puts a bishop here, I do bishop there. Um, he's got some weak points over here. Maybe I could have done knight g5 straight away. It's still an option here, although it doesn't look crushing. All right, so let's get the king out of the center and then attack. And I expect that if I do knight g5, he just blocks uh, he places some piece on f7, and this is slow for me. Right, so... Uh, do I place on b5 instead? Yeah, let's place here and try to weaken b7. Although what I really need in hand is a bishop, not a knight. I think. Alright, so is he going to take back with the queen? Is he seriously... okay. Sure. You know what would help? A bishop. If I had a bishop that I could put there, that would help. Now I've got a bishop. Now I put it there. I mean, that's a pretty textbook case if you trade for the piece that you want. Uh... So now I got a queen, but it's not the end of the world. Like I was saying, being down a queen really isn't such a big problem. Um, it's when your opponent has more attackers than you that um, that things become problematic. Uh, this is 
interesting and sharp. Might lose me some material, but I'm not seeing how else to proceed. Uh, so he can drop a piece here and I get two pieces for a queen. This is more what I was expecting. And here I capture. And, oh, I was going to take here. Um, I didn't see king takes. King takes is a living on the wild side, for sure. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't have enough attackers to pull this off. So I'm just going to win a pawn. And then hopefully my bishop can zigzag back and take everything and get involved in this attack. Um, yeah, that's the one risk I run is that he gets some counterattacking in. Um, I'm not too afraid. Like, two pieces for a queen isn't so bad. And now I've got all kinds of threats blooming. Uh, there's definitely a lot of options for white here. Where do I go? Um, okay, so my big idea is that I'm going to uh, queen takes here, check. Uh, this gets my queen out of dodge and continues the attack. And because I dropped a pawn, he's disincentivized from dropping a piece there to, s to block the check. Um, I'm just not having the exact attacker I need to pull off uh, my plan. I just need to give it a little bit of time. Oh, hang on. So this would get me a rook. Rook's actually kind of important here. Now I am opening myself up to... Oh, hang on. I've got that covered with my knight. I was thinking that, like, knight at e2, and maybe I'm in some danger. But now I'm okay. Everything's fine. Also, if he checks me, I just go king h1. Unless he checks on h3, and then I'm forced to take it. Uh, it's... Oh, this is mate. It's not mate. Oh, shoot. That's not good. That's not good. Am I getting mated? I'm very close to getting mated. Um. Alright, so I'm down a rook. We'll play with these odds. I have to... Pr oh, neat. No, I had F2 covered. My queen covers F2 against the typical bug house sack and mate. Um, I'm freaking out here. Partly because my time is low, but... Um, yeah, no, I missed knight takes H7. Uh, I also missed bishop takes H6. Give me another chance and I'll play it. I don't think I'm getting another chance though. I think my opponent knows what he's doing. Yep. There's only so many times you can bungle the attack before your opponent spots something that works. Um. Alright, so. I'm threatening uh, I'm not even sure what I'm threatening. That's not good. Okay. I'm not sure what he's threatening either. We both have a lot of really vague threats here.
Oh, shoot. Yeah, okay, you got me. Well, there's only so much I can bungle before that. Yeah, I see it now. That's a pretty atypical pattern. And by that, I mean it's not a pattern at all, but it works, so I needed to stop it. Um, all right, so this slows um, any initiative my opponent might want to build up instantly. And now I want to castle and drop on h3. Still want to castle and drop on h3. Okay, well, I get to drop on h3. That was my big plan. And now if I get more stuff, I want to drop more stuff. Uh, also take out his knight that defends his king. And if possible, get my rook into the center. Um, so his king side is very rapidly crumbling. Um, I'm not sure what he's planning. Okay, this makes tons of holes around his king. If I were white, I'd not be comfortable playing such a move. I'm sacking a knight. Sacking here looks fun. If knight takes, then I actually don't have any sacks and ideas here, but... Um, I thought I had something clever. How am I not winning this? Oh, I should have dropped on G2. That was the key idea. Apparently. Because um, he's got all kinds of weak light squares. It's just finding some point on which to invade is the tricky part. So now he trades bishop for two, which makes sense. Um, if I drop on e4, he blocks an f3. We're going to try this anyhow. I have some belief that it might work. Okay, so I got some material. Uh, that seems a bit aggressive. Alright, so I mean, he's only got so many pieces he can drop. Each time he drops one, it blocks his remaining pieces, so... This can't be terrible. I'm still threatening to drop on h3. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm threatening other things, too. Maybe I am. Alright, so there's the drop. He's got to do that. Alright, if he takes, I take back. Probably. Yeah, we'll take. And, um... I mean, I want that to work. I'm not sure if that does. What else can I try? Yeah, let's try this. Oh wait, no, he's threatening e6 also. Still, this looks powerful. It might not be powerful, but it looks powerful. Alright. 
Um, let's block just to gain a tempo. All right. Get a rook. Um, just sack, sack, mate, right? He's got a block or something. I'm not sure how he shores up that F2 point. He's up of two minutes practically, but um, I might be up a lot of material very soon. All right, if King H1, this is mate. If King there, um, it's not mate. Still looks strong. I mean, how is this king so surviving this at all? I don't understand. Apparently it is, but I don't understand it. And he's got tons of pieces he can drop toward my king also, so this is terrifying. I have no time to calculate, but those considerations aside, I'm winning this. Uh, in some sense, that doesn't matter. Um, He's just going to drop all of his pieces and try to attack me, and we'll see how this goes. <sighs> what a mess. You have to forgive my lack of commentary, I have no time to think. Oh, I can't pre-move drop. That was exciting. All right, so I beat a 1977 rated player. Working my way back up toward the top. Oh my, whew. What a game, what a show. <sighs> Welcome more in a car. Oh my. <laughs> okay, so let's just sack sack mate, right? Perhaps I would play better if I weren't asleep. Um, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, whoa, whoa, you can't get away with this. No, this is this is not going to work out. It's not going to go well for my opponent. Um, 
Yeah. There's not going to be any big surprises there. Uh, this is especially not going to work for my opponent. Look at all the free st Oh, hang on. Yeah, I want to take that. Uh, I'm not seeing a follow-up. Amazingly, my opponent has everything covered. Uh, let's just put a bishop here, defend, and, you know, attack later. Uh, when is later? Later's probably now. So if he castles, I take on e2. Um, also, I'm threatening f3 and h1, so... You know, this is how I think at this hour. Um, so probably I'll play for another nine and a half minutes or so and call it a day. Uh, I was originally thinking, you know, I could win this tournament. It could be so much fun. And the more I'm thinking about it, I'm realizing, gosh, I'm missing a lot of tactics. So maybe, just maybe, I should... Uh, think about wrapping this up. Alright, see, when I'm up a queen, or up an exchange or two, uh, I can think about sacking things back for fun. Um, not just for fun, but, you know, for when it's, like, super effective for me to give material back. Do I sack my queen? I could drop a pawn at h2. And ridiculous tactics result from that. I don't see it working. I could also drop a knight on h2. Uh, and then he plays king g2, and what in the world's going on? Pawn h2 looks way more fun. Pawn g3 probably just wins on the spot, so why should I bother with... No. Pawn g3 knight takes. Pawn h2, bishop takes queen, pawn takes check, um, something, something, something. Fill in the blank. Oh, pawn g2. How about g2? Oh, I'm so close to all these things working. If I just had one more piece, this would be crushing. Um, Alright, well, we're, we're taking the pawn. After all those potential ideas were thought of. Um, it just makes me realize that having extra material outweighs any strategic considerations. Or any tactical considerations, rather. Having extra material is a strategic consideration that outweighs the tactics of the moment. Okie dokie. It's actually admirable how well my opponent's holding this together. Oh, I forgot king takes is the thing. Apparently my opponent didn't consider it, or rejected it. Um, but yeah, now he's got two pieces in hand, and I have, like, an entire army. So, um, may the odds be in my favor or something silly like that. Uh, if he does bishop takes, okay, never mind. We're, we don't need to digress there, but bishop takes, I had a forced mate, or winning a lot of material. Um... How many queens do I have in hand? Just one. Oh, right, he's got the other queen. Um, oh, I just take here. Perfect. And take here. Okay. I 
can afford to give back some material in cases where it helps. And this is definitely one of those cases. All he's got is a queen in hand. We'll see where your if your queen can save you now. Oh, I can't drop. There we go. There we go. That was good fun. Oh, the chat hides my pocket. Oh no. Well, let me fix that. Um, yeah. Wouldn't do to have crazy house without um, the pocket. Thanks for letting me know. Um, well, now I feel foolish. I've been doing this whole thing executing these brilliant attacks and nobody can see what pieces I have so it's just a big surprise what yeah okay I forgot about that all right so you're playing a fide master but is he a crazy house master we'll find out take here okay I think we know the answer to the question already but maybe there's something I don't know I'm pretty sure he's not a crazy house master. Most of us are still learning the variant, um, which is just released today, so uh, there's definitely a learning curve for most of us. Um, I have kind of a head start on that learning curve, since I used to play on other chess servers and was rated about 2,000 at crazy, crazy House. Um, I think it was my best variant. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just a little bit booked up on these kinds of things. But I haven't touched it in a while, so it's possible I might have forgotten a lot of this. Um, if I had a queen, that would be so nice. Alright, so I've castled by hand. Uh, do I want this? I don't want to give up my rook. This is why he's a fide master, because he, he appreciates how strong these attacking pieces are. Um, I'm going to give up my rook against my better judgment, but I think getting back these light squares um, is something important enough for me to... Uh, give back some material. Holy moly. This is uncomfortable. So he might not be like a crazy house master, but he's still going to kick my butt. Because uh, he's still good at chess. And crazy house is just a variant. It's chess like other variants are chess. Um... Hmm. He's got no pieces in hand, so I can afford to do this, and I'm not instantly dead for doing it. Um, that said, it is pretty scary. Yep, not a problem. Um... My king is going on a bit of a walk. Yeah, I don't have the right pieces to block his attack. And now he's threatening to, like, try drop stuff and mate me that way. Um, my king's gonna run this away. Oh! Never mind, then. Alright, well, that ends that game. Um... But yeah, I don't think that that opening play was sound, uh, but it was good enough to beat me. Oh, now we got an international master. Dare I repeat to this I am what the FM just played against me? Probably not. <laughs> But it would be something if I just, like, lashed out and sacked on F7 against the IM and pulled off some miracle upset. Um, that would be fantastic.
Oh, can you just take F2? Like I was saying, I probably ought to wrap this up. Um. Hmm. Like, if I'm not calculating clearly and cogently, uh, I probably should not continue playing the tournament. It's been fun thus far, but, um, as I get more and more exhausted, uh, I miss a lot more tactics. Alright, so what's his big idea? Like, if I just... Okay, he's gonna get a knight in hand soon enough. I guess that's what he's banking on. I've got to go to a light square. So, this one instant, I'm not dead yet. But, um... More broadly speaking, I think I'm okay. Like, I can pull my bishop back here, drop other bishops and such on dark squares, and probably not get mated as long as he doesn't get a knight. And if he does get a knight, then hopefully he doesn't get enough pawns and bishops and such to continue. No, I, I really don't believe in king g3 there. Um, it just seems like absolutely the wrong way to go. Okay, he seeks confrontation here. Sure. Okay, we'll trade a bishop for a bishop. Um, let's pin the knight. I'm not intending to give up any knights here. Knights are great way, great attackers for breaking through fortresses. I'm not intending on giving up any of them. Um, Okay, let's take there, and win a rook. See, normally this doesn't happen, so that's not a common tactic. Um, but I'm playing little street smart chess where I'm just exploiting what's available in the moment. Uh, do I want the rook or the pawn? I think I want the pawn, actually, because this increases the count of the pieces that I have, as opposed to the material value. And the greater the count of the pieces, the more tactical opportunities there are. Okay, if I drop e7 and then play knight at d5... Oh, he's got queen e6, though. Um... Hmm... How do I not have some nonsense against this stuff? Like, how am I not instantly winning this? This has got to be strong. There's like no way I'm not winning a queen and more um, with this kind of stuff. Do I play knight at d5? No, I just... Yeah, knight at d5 seems stronger than just knight d5. Um... Oh, but now he's got queen e6 again. Oh, but then I have pawn at f5. Yeah, this, this queen... Notice that he's not able to check me by putting a piece on a dark square. And I guess he's not able to check me by putting pieces on light squares either. And he really wants a knight. Knights are really strong in this variant. And... I guess that's something that he's going to better appreciate as, as a result of this game. Um, okay. But what if I don't want to take your queen? Yeah, why take a queen for a knight when you can get a rook for nothing? Um, or I could get both. Okay. And if he takes, then my rook gets open on the h-file. 
So momentarily I'm up material. Um, still not getting mated. Man, he really wants a knight. And I don't want to give him a knight. Oh, shoot. That might hurt. That might hurt a lot. Then again, I might have some tactics that cancel that out, but um, I shouldn't have banked on that. Alright, see this? Oh, that's okay. That's an interesting way to address this position. Now if he checks me on e2, I just take his knight and bishop, and I just have an overwhelming number of pieces. Um, What's he intending? I'm just really confused. Okay, I gave him his knight. He's got the knight he's been clamoring for this whole game. Um, I'm not sure that at this point it helps him. If he does nothing, I just have knight g6. Actually, queen, rook h8 make, is even stronger. Alright, good game. Good game. Yeah, that's definitely a game that'll give you things to think about. Oh man, I feel bad for the guy. He lost two in a row. So, yeah, apparently Atrophied is running away with, oh, I see, At yeah, Atrophied, I read that right. He's running away with the tournament, um, with 310 tournament points. It's going to be just a touch difficult to catch him. Um, all right, if you take my knight, I'll take back, and I still have attackers. Um... I do have a pawn in hand if I want to use it. Um, let's continue attacking. I don't like offering my opponent options for trading. Because uh, those options are not mandatory. And my opponent has the choice, if he chooses, that... He might not trade, and might just leave the position really tense. And that trading option might stay on the table for who knows how many turns. That's what's most dangerous about those trading options. It's not that they take it, but that they might just let it sit there. Okay, I think I'm fine. I mean, yeah, he can take g2. I have lots of attacking pieces. Um, So, if he takes g2, I could even take back. Or I could drop an a6. The a6 drop looks very tempting. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. I'm playing with fire, guys. Well, no, he just doesn't, he's not familiar with the variant. I'm sure, to be an IM, you have to be quite strong at chess. There are some noted differences between Crazy House and chess. It just takes a while to adapt to those things. And maybe, for all we know, it's four in the morning for that IM, so... I'd give him a break. Um, I think definitely, at this variant, he's got some things to learn and appreciate, and... Probably as a result of our game, he 
already learned those things. Um, but putting them into practice is a little bit tricky. All right, now if I just could drop a rook at a8, this would be perfect. Um, Okay, can I get away with this nonsense? No, I get mated if I do that stuff, so I'm actually going to protect my fortress. Oh wait, no, if you dropped knight h3, I just do bishop takes h3. So yeah, knight at e5 might have won. Um, I'm a little flustered over that. Yeah, knight at e5, knight at h3, bishop takes h3, bishop takes h3, knight... Or, yeah, pawn at b7, king b8, knight takes queen. I mean, it's tricky. But this all stops him from dropping a knight at h3, because there's a piece in the way. It's his own piece. Um, and so I'm threatening pawn at b7 at some opportune moment. Preferably when he's not able to protect it, c6. Once c6 is mine, then pawn b7 becomes lethal. Um, so I think c6 is under my domain. So I think now it's strong. And I'm threatening knight at c6. Also threatening to win the queen, but, I mean, knight at c6 is the main threat. And if he pushes c6, I just assume knight takes, and that's also mate. Um, so, no doubt he's going to lash out with something here. Do I take the rook? I think I'm forced to. Yeah, I have to take the rook. My queen covers all the light squares that are relevant for, like, knight at f3, queen g4, knight at d2. All this is covered by my queen, and his bishop covers the h3 square, so... Um, a lot of tactics are dealt with, just the way that this is set up. Right, so this prepares knight at h3. Um, I think I'm still covered, though, and this renews my, my knight at c6 threat. Usually you see that white has pawns on c6 and b7 and is just able to drop on a6 and it's just crushing. Also, this bishop on f1 attacks, um, hang on, this bishop on f1 attacks a6. Can I take g2? If I take g2, he takes my bishop. I go king. Now he's got too many knights. I can't take on g2. Ooh, that's a problem. Um, I must, but I can't, but I must. But I can't, but I must. That's not good. Um, all right, YOLO. Uh, can I go this way? My king is temporarily safe. Um, I can take that. Oh, but I don't have mate. Oh wait, yeah I do. I've got multiple ways of checkmating him. I just happen to pick the most difficult one. Yeah, just putting a piece on a8 would have won on the spot. But, you know, I like making things look dramatic. Um, 
All right, so I'm going to play knight f6 and not welcome that crazy attack that happened the other game. Um, just castle by hand, play d6, and get some sane moves out there. See, in Bug House, this would be atrocious. In Crazy House, I'm not so afraid, because he's got nothing to drop. And now his knight's hanging. Okay. And now his rook's hanging. Yeah, this, this tactic is going to repeat itself a few times, I think. Um... At least if I want to. I think I do. We're going to keep doing this over and over until I win the piece. Um, and the salient point here is I can do bishop takes on e3. Yeah, And now I'm winning the knight. Okay, um, so I want a piece, so now what? I mean, that wins the game, right? It's that simple. You just win a piece and then it's game over. Except when it's more complicated. Uh, oh crap. <laughs> I, it's so late. It is so late. But hey look, I got a knight. Um, All right, we'll just pretend this is okay. I'm threatening a fork. Um, we'll just pretend that this is exactly going according to plan. Um, I missed Rook A8 a long time ago that other game. Thanks for letting me know. No. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll just take here. Threaten another fork. Sack, sack, mate. You know, the whole deal. All nine yards. He still doesn't have a knight, so I'm still not too afraid. Um, I'm just going to keep my king on light squares, and hopefully doom will come to my opponent before it comes to me. Um... <laughs> yeah, the third bishop just isn't there. You guys can safely ignore it. It's not really on the board. Um, Alright, so that's a free pawn, right? Alright, now, beware of pieces that could go there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have to make a little humor at my own expense. Um, do I go here or do I go there? Eeny meeny, I don't know. You gotta pick one and stick with it. Um, I'm going here. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities here. I probably should just be checking him over and over and seeing, like, if something sticks, but whatever. Yeah, when you capture a piece, you can drop it as your own. Uh... Like here, I can drop the rook, and um, hmm, <laughs> I could do rook at d2, right? Does that get me killed?
Please tell me I'm surviving this. Okay. How do I cover this? He still doesn't have a knight, so so far I'm still okay. Like, if he got a knight, I would be so cooked here. But, um, this isn't Bug House. Um, uh, he's not able to just immediately get a knight. He has to actually capture it. Um. Okay. Ah, he wants me to take and then he can put a piece on e6. That's his big plan. Or he's going to take on... Okay. Uh, that actually looks quite good for him. Um... All right, hopefully I've got everything covered. We'll know in just a minute. Also, we're going to see if he takes and promotes to a queen. Um, I'm not sure that it matters here, but he might want to promote to a knight. All right, he took a knight. Note that when I captured, I got a pawn in my reserve. Um... I've been trying to get out of check this whole game. It's been tricky. He keeps finding one check after another. Eventually, yeah, he did find that. That looks crushing. Uh, contact checks tend to be very strong. That's not good. Well played, sir. Well played. I probably bungled it, but whatever. It's a good fun game. Um, D5 is my standard reply to D4. And I'm going to set up cheapos, because why not? He plays knight c3. Oh, okay. He's wasting a tempo, pushing a pawn, and making all kinds of holes over here and here. So, yeah, that works for me. If you're going to walk into this, at least make sure that I don't have a pawn already. Um, just saying. All right, let's keep trading. Trades are exciting. Yeah, going berserk might have been fun. Problem is that I lose my increment, and like this, going berserk encourages slower chess for my opponent, and that's not what I'm looking for. At least not at this hour. It could be a fun thing to do uh, from time to time, but right now it's not what I'm looking for. All right, so I'm doing knight at c2 or something like that. Um, I've got two knights in hand. Uh, just have to keep developing. I don't have a clear cut attack here. Um, eeny meeny something. Don't lose my knight. Um, Uh, I could do sack two knights for three pawns. That would be weird. Yeah, I'm just going to go to d5. So I've got all the dark squares controlled. Um, and I just have to work on controlling all the light squares, and we'll be A-OK. -okay. Um, so, 
take that. So I get a pawn to drop here. So I sacked a knight to win a rook. It's not bad. Um, oh, I have two knights in hand. It's a little tricky to recognize. Like the difference between one knight and two knights. I kind of like what Raptor Chess Interface and others do, where they put like a little number next to the piece uh, in or the pocket. Um, the number just tells you how many of that piece you have. It's a little bit easier to visualize or understand um, than what I'm currently looking at, but that's not a big deal. Uh, how do I not have mate? It's not cool. Okay, this is defended, so I don't need to worry about hanging it. Here we go. YOLO. <laughs> okay. Check. And the point is that if he goes king h1, I just drop a pawn on g2. Um, actually, I was going to win the rook this way, but this looks stronger. Yeah, that looks marginally stronger than winning a rook. See, that other game, I missed rook at a1 a bajillion times, but this game, I was all over rook h1. I don't know, there's just pattern recognition. It's easier to see some things than others. Knights are very strong, yeah. Yeah, knights are strong. Contact checks are strong. Uh, knight checks are strong. Um, 1641. Right, let's see what you got. Keep setting up for this stuff. Um, free queen. Not gonna turn down a free queen. Free rook. Not gonna turn down a free rook. Uh, free bishop. Yeah, we'll take the bishop. Unless there's not a free bishop and we just made. Well, that was fast. Um, yeah, I think queen d3 was probably a mouse slip. If I had to guess. Uh, so yeah, I think maybe this will be the last game. I know I said that a while ago, but really I must go. I can't just continue doing this all night. Um, so with that said, hopefully you guys enjoy what I've been doing. Um, if you do enjoy, uh, feel free to follow me and uh, hopefully I'll provide more of this content. And if not, uh, you're welcome to do as you please also. Um, Thanks, Orcar.
So he's not playing to d2, and I don't have this fork. Um, I'm just going to give up the pawn. Hmm. Do I do that anyway? Do I sack on f3? Okay, how many pawns? Three pawns in hand. This, uh, it's hard to believe this doesn't lead somewhere. But I don't need to do it, so discretion's the better part of valor here point is that once his queen moves, then I can put a pawn on f3, and this is just as crushing as if I'd done this in the first place, but without all the complications of, like, tactics. This is just straight-up winning material. I didn't actually expect bishop h3, um... can't calculate this, I'm just going to play it and see what happens. If I had a rook, I could win this. I'm getting a rook. That's convenient timing. Alright, and I felt that I could win this. Now, is there actually a win here? Oh, well, this is anticlimactic. Quiet move. And mate. Alright, so yeah, thanks to one and all for watching. And I uh, hope to play some more of this variant in the future. And I uh, hope to uh, see you around. Uh, take care and have a good night.